in which case I'm going to do two more. This is a long form poem called One Coffee Poem, which I think is a bit like a... It was written in one go, it's been unedited, and it's, I think it's a form of empathy in a way. One Coffee Poem. Time experienced as a flat white for here with coconut milk. It's 50p extra, I'm like, what the fuck? Context, flat white, yes. And a croissant as well? Yes. <laughs> Our barristers don't just make coffee, they handcraft it. Four stabbed in random knife attacks. Smartphone on the table, it's literally impossible to carry the coffee cup to the table without spilling it. Ah, that's what the sources are for. National Bank using post office network. Where's our national investment bank? The white haired man in the picture seems to be pushing his finger into his own eye. I wonder what that photographer was thinking or what his political agenda might be. Life at the BBC, life at the BBC. My good friend's life at the BBC or somewhere. Anyway, she works in TV. Hello, come on in. Mondays to Fridays, 06.30 till 1900, other days vary. Balance 20p on a lemon and win yourself a drink. It's like an airport in the morning. The chairs, tables and people and all the other, and all the rest of the furniture. Annoying mobile phone ringtone. Would it be okay if it was mine? Why isn't it mine? What's wrong with mine? I had to wait for the light jazz band to stop playing the song before I could reach for my salad. Finally, I've gone full Waitrose. The lady comes to sit near me with a child. I notice from her voice she's from another country. Maybe one of the bad ones. Does that make me racist? If so, which bit? Or is it okay to notice these things when it is not based on visual verification? Her husband, or who I assume is her husband, speaks in the same language I don't understand. His tone of voice is harsh and pitched at exactly the point where it is impossible to tune out. It's annoying and frustrating and in a way terrifying, I think it could possibly be. But I don't think it makes me racist, but to be honest, I just don't know anymore. What frustrates me and slash or why, I better turn on the TV to find out. But actually, I don't think they know any better than I do. At least I don't have to pretend like I do, although I do. The side of the building across the street, sheer and dark, a black mountain side, Led Zeppelin, White Man Blues, and the possibly defunct concept of cultural appropriation. Empty coffee per cup, a residual aftertaste, coconut milk, tables and chairs and people, and all the other furniture. The trees and flowers outside, only two crossword clues left to do. Where is the friend to do them with? Is he that person anymore? Movie, movie, Morgan Freeman, the one you want in your movie when you need it to have dignity. Visions of a dystopian future, just another, another vision of a dystopian future. The endless push towards the human concept of self-actualization, self-rediscovery, the man in the movie and his self-rediscovery. He acts for all of us. Apple stalks and used tangerines, the unknowable knowledge that death is final, dream of us, and all these things we could have done together. No spoilers about last night's game. The fetal position. The fetal position. The fetal position. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is what passes for me to be the, a new poem. I wrote it around New Year. In fact, on New Year's Eve. Um, which I happen to be spending alone, which is no problem. But um, it does lead to thought processes, does it not? Anyway, it doesn't really have a title. But here it is. And this will be my last one. And I just want to say one more time thanks to Jason and Hannah and everyone who's putting on these nights and everything. And all you guys for listening and performing and everything. It's such a cool night to be at. There's little to do on a New Year's Day. The scales of time have fallen away. The open door of the next year beckons to the one who sits in fleeting seconds. A hand held out from a future self with a face familiar and unknown. A future's past, a story tells a hearth of hearts, a tree yet grown. I smile into a pleasant frown a face concordant with my own. There's little to do on a New Year's Day. These scales of mine are all away. I dream of dreams I make to dust, a fallen pearl surrounding crust, deleted lesions, ghost of when and for and never now and then. A view of time, technology, and seated here 
on my own knee. I hear myself and don't betray my best intentions, come what may. My breast and arms are scarred with rage from years ago. There's little to do on a New Year's Day when dreams of dreams are gold, aren't they? There's little to do on a New Year's Day. The shops are closed, the ways we stray are scattered across the previous scope of expectation, seas of hope. Of golden gates and stairways hidden, pathways and redemptions ridden, sun gods, chariots, waxy wings, across the sky the future sings. There's little to do on a New Year's Day, except to dream again one day. Thank you.